So now it's time to move towards other cluster we want to focus on this morning, which is cluster two, culture, creativity and inclusive society. Specifically, we are going to talk about society and widening the European research area called ERA, which is the ambition to create a single borderless market for research, innovation and technology across the EU. One of the voices we have the pleasure of hearing this morning as a national contact point is that of Aida Diaz Saez from AGAUR, a public funding body within the Secretariat of Universities and Research, Ministry of Enterprise and Knowledge of the Government of Catalonia. This speech will last until a quarter past 12. Ms. Diaz, please go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and good morning, everybody. Eh, buenos días a todos. Eh, muchas gracias por habernos por pensar good en Good morning, everybody, and thank you for thinking of us and inviting us to this session about Europe and mostly about Cluster 2 and the part of ERA. It's uh, good to be with you, even if it's online. Uh, the presentation has two sections. The first one, I will be explaining Cluster 2 of Culture, Creativity and Inclusive Society. And this would be an addition to what uh, Francisco de la Torre has explained. Francisco has explained more the more political and strategic part. I'm going to talk more about how this is transferred to some financing lines for the next call 2022. And also some input about how to focus the different topics and how we focus the projects in this area that is different to other clusters that we're going to see in the few next days. Then we have a different part, which is the shorter, which is a cross-cutting um, topic, widening and strengthening the European research area. This is a very small program, but it's really strategic. And it includes a part of Horizon 22, which is science for, with and for society. As a Galician societies have participated a lot, and we have several topics that had already been presented and published in the World Program 2018-2020, which you could find of interest. This explaining 40 minutes cluster two and era is a lot. So the goal is just to give you hints of information different, uh, well, a few bits of pieces of information and then telling you who we are uh, so that you can contact us and you can have a personal interview with us so that we learn about your interest. About cluster two, as Francisco has said, it's in pillar two. It has a budget of 2,200 million euros, which is a great increase in comparison to challenge six, which is its antecessor, which was had 1,300 million euros. Because for the first time, we are integrating research and investment in cultural and creative industries as, a, as an engine of cultural and economic change. This is one of the characteristics of Horizon Europe because this type of projects had not been financed before. This were more included in Creative Europe. The goals of the cluster, as Francisco has mentioned, is to enhance a better understanding of Europe, having policies that are more inclusive, uh, resilient, preserving the cultural heritage and promoting these cultural sectors, the creative industries. This program is based on society, it has a social orientation, it has to do with research in humanities. It also deals with the ITC, which is also very important in the different calls and also the part related to materials, related to cultural heritage and so on. It goes far beyond the uh, social sciences, but the final approach is to create new knowledge, new data in order to favor, to have a social impact 
for different institutions in society and also for the policy makers. It is a program which is focused on giving input recommendations to the politicians, to the legislation makers. He wants to answer nine of the 16 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. And as Francisco has said, it covers the six European Commission policy priorities, new push for European democracy, promoting European way of life, and etc. It wants to promote the European democracy. Having Europe stronger in the world, all the improvement of digitization, an economy that works for people, and European Green Deal, all these are included in the different topics that I'm going to present. All the digitization, the Green Deal, and the situation of COVID with the next generation EU is a cross-cutting elements that are in all the different calls we have open in this program for 2021-22. All the next generation EU, how to work around the pandemics, how can we recover from this situation of pandemics, how can we prepare for future crisis without leaving anyone behind. This is a part of the philosophy of all the calls that are open for 2022. This cluster is divided into three destinations or impact areas. The first one is democracy and governance, which is about strengthening democratic values, including the rule of law and fundamental rights. Then we have the cultural heritage and the cultural and creative industries. And we have the social and economic transformations. We want to promote these transformations in order to generate societies that are more inclusive and resilient. These are not silos. They, um, they well, influence each other. The cultural heritage is cross-cutting, for example, to the other destinations. How do we generate this governance and democracy? Obviously, this has a basis in the heritage and the culture. The cultural heritage also influences how we face our socio-economic transformations. The call for 2022, I'm going to show you the possibilities of finances that we have. It's got a lot more budget to 164 million euros. We moved from 16 topics in 2021 to 29 topics. The increase has been mostly on the two first destinations, culture and democracy. They have increased the number of topics in these destinations. However, the socioeconomic part was already greatly covered in the previous call, and now it has the same number of topics. The call will open the 20th of January and we'll call the 20th of April. If any of you is interested in any of these topics, you can already contact us because we're starting to generate projects already. We're starting to look for partners and as national contact points, we can help you with this. I'm going to tell you about the different financing opportunities we have in the different destinations. The destination one, which is democracy and governance, this destination, what the European Commission has detected is that nowadays democracies are more fragile and vulnerable than in the past. We have lost the trust on political institutions and also world governance is suffering great tensions, great pressure. We want to help answer these challenges we're facing nowadays and we want to try to create democratic societies that are more, much more inclusive and resilient. We want to improve transparency, uh, accountability, and trust in the democratic institutions and in the rule of law. And also, and mostly, around the topics, we want uh, to empower society and the citizens. 
Something that I want to mention is that maybe it is true that each one of the topics is focused on very specific uh, areas such as uh, inclusivity, empowering, education, and so on, but all these aspects are included in the different topics of the of a single destination or affect the different the three destinations that I was mentioning before. All the topics of this call are based and nurtured. They give answers to four European politics, the Democracy Action Plan. The second one is the European Plan of Human Rights of Democracy, the European Charter of Basic Rights and, and the Strategy for Gender Equality. In this destination, we have nine topics. They are all financed by two, three million euros. They are all actions for research and innovation. And the European Commission is waiting, is expecting projects that would last between three and four years. If it's more than this, it must be really, really justified. There's a great variety of topics from ITC, inequality, radicalism, education, and so on. The two first topics is social sciences and also technologies of communication and information and all the new emerging technologies. The first topic is all big data and artificial intelligence and how all these technologies are affecting democracy, both at, uh, talking about the threats of these technologies towards democracies and the governance at the European level, but also as positive aspects, how they can help reinforce the democratic aspects of this. The European Commission is interested in generating new protocols and helping the politician legislate the regulation of data big data and also with a focus on big data and artificial intelligence in order to empower citizens so that they're much more involved in the democratic process. Ethical issues uh, and education issues to be taken into account when you read the topic are also to be integrated. Everything that has to do with innovative and responsible innovation. The second topic is related with the future of democracy and civic participation. That is the idea to create an interface uh, so that new social movements and society can work hand in hand in the spaces of representative institutions and also in deliberation, political deliberation spaces and also in order to generate more trust in democratic institutions. Here, digitalization has a key role to play. ITCs uh, can play an important role in this interface between social movements and institutional representative uh, institution. Also, education is key here and co-creation processes together with citizens. Another issue is inequalities. In, term, in democracy. The idea would be to understand the drivers of inequality that have an effect on the commitment of citizens and their participation in democratic processes, issues like gender, ethics, economy. Depending on the situation, they are more prone to participate in this kind of process. The idea is to leave no one behind and study these topics in order to elaborate measures to avoid these kind of inequalities affecting uh, participation. That's why pilot strategies and uh, action plans, etc., need to come uh, to support this topic. This topic also has a lot to do with citizens' participation and involvement and different social innovation approaches when 
develop it, developing these kind of projects. Another project has to do with education for democracy. That is, both, both at a formal and informal level, what should be included in curricula and also in extracurricular uh, activities or activities carried out by social movements and NGOs in favor of democracy. If you to have a much more humanistic education focusing on civic issues so that all these things within this global goal can empower citizens uh, on all these issues. Also, the issue of youth and education in initial stages, both uh, in terms of small children and teenagers. The topics in the class are two. The European Commission indicated what are the impacts uh, expected, but these are open topics. So each research group can adapt them to any target group that they consider more interesting or that fits their expertise or expectations better. So topics uh, related with education for democracy can focus on students, on the on risk populations, etc. In terms of extremisms, etc. and their and how this has an impact on society. That is, the effects of the narratives on social media, a mass media that generate or an impact on society. These, uh, these causes that have an effect on society are lead to an increase in populism. The idea is to be how recommendations at the political level could be made to face these narratives and to reduce the impact so that they do not expand in our societies. This has a global and local perspective specifically in the case of authoritarian, populist, and extremist discourses. Also, there's another topic, the role of media for democracy, how policymakers and citizens can use democracy in order to contribute to a much more healthier democracy. The issue of quality, accountability, and the transparency of the media this topic focuses a lot on the role of uh, journalists and mass media. It's kind of a new topic. In previous programs, the role of uh, journalists hadn't been tackled so much. Here, both the role of journalists and mass media in general, in general uh, is uh, tackled so that they can be much more democratic. Also, the impact of social media and the new media in terms of democracy. The previous topic was focusing more on journalism, but here we talk about media in general. And besides, how to empower citizens in terms of democracy and to move social media to prevent fake news and promote more inclusive societies. Here, there are also some recommendations uh, expected so that politicians can start working on these issues, on the impact of mass media in the evolution of democratic systems. Another topic uh, regarding representative democracy in flux also related with the electoral behavior. This is something that wasn't tackled much in the past, how citizens can participate more in electoral processes, in decision-making processes, etc. 
here we also expect uh, recommendations, methodologies in order to boost the trust in political institutions and to reach a higher degree of transparency and representativeness so that in political fora, different layers of society are included with different sensibilities and points of view. One last topic of this destination is global governance. This focuses more on multilaterality and transnational democracy. We are in a world that is changing in terms of global governance. So the idea is to see how these uh, issues can be tackled to provide some inputs to the European Commun Commission to see how to face this transnational and multilateral democracy. That uh, now we move to the session two, which includes issues of mass media, uh, education, etc., and ITCs. Now we move to the session two, which are opportunities for the cultural heritage and cultural and creative industries. This is something new in the framework program. The name of the cluster itself includes the term cultural creativity, which uh, shows the importance that the European Commission is giving to these kind of projects. In this sense, the idea is to promote the European cultural heritage, access to this heritage, and to promote cultural and creative industries as agents uh, to create employment, to boost the economy. There are 7 million, 8.7 million people in the EU working in this sector according to the European Union, which is 3.8% of the total workforce. And it also represents 1.2 million enterprises. It's an important sector, but so far it had not been included in framework programs. It's true that in all the initiatives in this destination, it must have a green approach to promote the cultural heritage. Digitalization has an important uh, role here. This industry should be a driver of innovation. It is also related to the Creative Europe program, and it includes other topics that had been included in the social challenge number five, focusing on climate change. A call from the European Institute of Technology is going to be published on cultural and creativity for these spaces where the education, research, and enterprises work uh, to promote cultural and creativity. What, what do we understand as cultural sectors we, we, before we move on to the topics we've been talking about? We consider them as sectors, the activities of which are based on cultural um, uh, ideas or uh, 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 audiovisuals, cultural heritage, architecture, festivals and music, uh, performing arts, publishing, radio, visual arts, libraries, archives. So. It's a wide uh, area. Museums would not uh, be included here. The European Commission does not consider them as a creative in and cultural industry. Probably, in despite we will see that museums are an important issue in all these topics. They are. 10 topics related with the cultural heritage and creative industries. The first one is a CSA, that's a coordination and support action for the exchange of good practices, and the other one's a focus on research. The difference with the previous two destination is that some topics have a little bit more budget. We are talking about two to four million euros. We have a topic focusing on safeguarding endangered languages in Europe. 
The idea is to safeguard these languages, to see also how these languages can in, involve our societies because they are part of our, our identity, of our social construction, also to promote the quality and linguistic diversity, especially in terms of minority regional languages. We are not talking only about uh, European languages, but also of countries surrounding the European Union. A second topic focuses more on the promotion of the cult European cultural heritage to make it known at an international level because this uh, cultural heritage can be appealing, can be a source of income. The idea is to make it known to the rest of the world in order to, to boost the European competitiveness at an international level as an entity that promotes its cultural heritage also in terms of tourism. The third topic is related, well, this has been already included in previous calls. The role of perceptions and values and traditions, how they can modify and give shape to to our societies and politics. The issue of COVID has had an impact here. In many European countries, the same policies have been implemented by the reaction of societies in different countries has been different. And this is also due to cultural and heritage aspects. The idea here is to work to see how these traditions and value affect us as European societies. This is a broad subject. You can focus on different uh, topics like COVID-19, immigration, the aging of the population, etc. Another topic related closely with with arts and crafts and how digital, digitalization has an effect on traditional crafts. Uh, there's also a topic focusing on the European music uh, ecosystem, how to foster it. Another one focusing on the on increasing the potential of the international competitiveness of the European filmmaking industry and the impact COVID-19 has had. Also, in terms of materials, architects, etc., we have the top this topic that focuses on how climate changes affecting the cultural heritage and which innovative methodologies we can use in order to protect it. Here we talk about materials, etc. Uh, the next uh, topic is video games and the effect they have in our European society, both games and video, video games and games in general and the role they can have in order to have a more, much more cohesive society. Also to generate employment, business models around video games and games in general. The last topic in this destination has to do with the new European Bauhaus, this new European initiative to create a creative space where researchers and artists and the world of art work together in order to generate ideas for a much more inclusive society to better the future of our society. This is also part or related with the European Green Deal. Destination three focuses on social and economic transformations to build much more inclusive, resilient and sustainable societies. 
this is this focuses on everything that has to do with migration, the job, the labor market, the youth, the aging of the population, inclusiveness, etc. It's closely related with the European pillar of social rights. There are 10 topics here which are quite different from each other, but which are at the same time interrelated. The first one are indicators for welfare to create or develop much more sustainable societies in the long term. Also, in terms of international cooperation, environmental justice, Another topic also related with the labor market. Not only the labor market, but also the spatial mobility at the European level, both intra-regional between countries and among countries, and also the effects that this mobility has in terms of in economic, cultural terms, effects on the labor market, the brain drain, for instance, and the impact it has uh, in rural areas, also focusing on inequalities at a regional level that this mobility is, is generating. There are two more topics focusing on migration. The first one has to do with a condition of conditions in which irregular migrants live and work and how migrants can participate more in the communities uh, where they live in. So that they can be more involved in decision making processes uh, by the host communities. Also, the gender perspective in terms of international cooperation, this is more than advisable. This is really advisable. That's why it is included in these topics. Next topic focuses on the empowerment, uh, gender and social, economic and cultural empowerment. And the next topic focuses on the labor market discrimination, what are the elements that generate these situations to face them. Here you could focus on uh, gender issues, m migration issues, etc. Another topic or the next one focuses on how labor skills have have an effect on the needs of the labor market. Next uh, topic focuses on equality. It's called strengthening racial, ethnic, and religious equality to fight any kind of discrimination, xenophobia, racism at a global and state level. To conclude this topic, there's another topic uh, focusing on migration, but specifically return uh, migrants and readmission of irregular migrants. This focuses mainly on governance. Different countries can work on these issues, both at an internal level or also with the countries of origin. The next topic is quite different. It's about the socioeconomic effects of aging societies at all levels, social, employment level, growth, uh, health systems. The next call for 2023-2024 will have a topic on aging societies. This is a challenge that Europe is focusing on. The European Commission has told us that in the next framework program, there will be more, there will be a lot more focus on these issues. Also, in the calls for this year, in this program, here you see the results of the 2021 call. For those of you who are interested, you can see how many were submitted. Those uh, applications were, or calls, or proposals, which had IC, 
ICT component uh, receives support. There's an important difference with other topics. Also, in terms of transformation, there was one focusing on ICTs and education, on how emerging technologies were affecting the educational systems. 68 proposals were submitted. Whenever there is an ICT component, there, there's a lot of interest by the community, and there's also much more competitiveness in this sense. Here you can see a slide about the Spanish participation in the Societal Challenge 6, which is the forerunner of these programs. Spain has always done really well in this sense. It has been the third country in terms of financing. The European Commission has a, a newsletter to be informed about the updates and as a national contact points, we all share this an, an email account and we are in constant contact with other European focal points. If you need partners, you can contact us to help you. To conclude, and just quickly, I will try to explain this new program and the financing facilities to strengthen the European research area. This is a program, not so much a research program, but a program of innovation and research policies that will help other Horizon 2020. The idea is to create mechanisms and knowledge to be used by other programs in order to promote innovation and research. This program is divided in two, two sub-programs, one called widening participation. I'm not going to refer about this one because the idea here is to widen the participation of those countries which are under the R&D threshold, especially in Eastern Europe. These are projects and calls that are quite focused so that these countries can uh, recover and increase their participation in order to be at the same level as other European countries. But as I said, these programs focus on specific countries. So I will talk more about the second part. It's a small part actually, but it tries to provide instruments and to help implement this. This was already published 20 years ago, this new European research area. The idea is to have an area for the free exchange of knowledge, ideas, and researches, but it was updated last year. This is one of the political priorities of the current European Commission. The new ER. A has four action line, one focusing on prioritizing investments and reforms at a political level, a second one focusing on improving access to excellence, the third one focuses on translating research and innovation results into economic value, and the fourth one focuses on how to deepen the European research area in terms of gender and others. These are the four priorities of the European research area, which translate uh, in the priorities of this program, cross of this cross-cutting program. These activities focus on the ecosystems on the one hand. There are also activities focusing on institutional changes within uh, institutions. This is. Uh, and, and a structural approach, but also there is a line focusing on researchers themselves. The call will open in January, we, and it will be the deadline is April next year. But if you are interested, you should start working on on this. Just briefly, the first topic in terms of his investments focuses mainly on policymakers, together with the Junta de Galicia and other European 
institution. The idea here is to promote joint research and innovation programs focusing on topics interesting for uh, member states or regions that want to publish joint calls. This was done in the previous call already. As for the second um, goal, there is no topic in, in this call. There used to be one on a network of researchers, but not this year. This year, in, in the third dimension, there are three topics. The first one is uh, ERA CAP concept, that is to have them locally so that different entities work together to promote research in specific scientific uh, aspects. This is a pilot to build a concept for this European hubs. If it works, then there will be further calls in the future. A second topic is uh, about international cooperation so that Europe does much more international cooperation, specifically with Africa. And the third topic is about how to transfer the knowledge that we generate in our research programs into policy making so that it has a, an impact in society. Here, there's a cascade funding that is other projects can also participate in activities. And to conclude, we have the deepening the ERA. This can be also interesting for you. This is something inherited uh, from a program called Science for and with Society. And this is also linked with the uh, responsible research and uh, innovation project. The idea is to generate research that answers to the needs and expectations of society. Here we see themes like responsible and open science, citizen sciences, also universities, alliances between universities, how to promote the European educational space through universities, and also the um, there are also funding possibilities. You see the main themes that are going to receive financings. Four of them have to do with open science, higher education, two focusing on science communication, citizen science, science education, gender and ethics. And here you can see some of the projects that we have here. There are four that had already been financed in 2018 which were already published. Published, we know that there are some organizations in Galicia that submitted their proposals. So now, if you didn't get, uh, get it there, now you can um, submit your proposal again with the changes that are necessary. One about the implementation of responsible research and innovation, and then how to do more training in terms of open science for researchers as a pilot. This also has to do with, uh, with university alliances and then open schooling where entities uh, in the field, work to promote science and research. And then also gender equality plans. This call uh, has been, has existed and existed in 2020. There was no topic on this last year. And from now on, for all these entities, uh, public entities, it's going to be compulsory. It's going to be compulsory to have a plan of equality all these topics of RRI, uh, cross-cutting, all this gender equality, scientific education, and so on, they are cross-cutting to all the other 
clusters of Horizon Europe. This also affects all the other clusters and we can find financing opportunities for all of them. Here you have the statistics, the proposals, the people who already made some applications. You can see the different applications that were made so that you can see the topics that are more competitive or that generate more interest. Spain is the first country in terms of financed projects. Here you have information about this new program and here you have the four national point points in ERA, it's Noelia and myself and the, the part of wider Ning, Ana and Hidalgo. This is all I wanted to say. I have uh, spoken a little bit longer, but anything you want to know, you can contact us via these emails or Skype or whatever. We can organize a meeting with you. Thank you very much.